Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Listen, people of God, in this holy moment, I want you to stand before God. The Bible says, come boldly before the throne of grace. I sense that this is an opportune moment in the heavens above. Where God is saying, son, daughter, you have ascended the hill of the Lord by faith in the Spirit. And I want you to ask me for something big. The Bible says, come boldly before the throne of grace. And you shall receive mercy. Say mercy. I said say mercy. You shall receive mercy in every time of need. So in this moment right now, in this open heavens, I want you to lift up your hands. Here it is. And I want you to begin to ask God for the desire of your heart. There it is. Come on, ask God. He's the desire of the nations. Begin to ask the Lord. Ask God. Come on, Rebesse. Come on, ask God in this holy, open heavens, divine moment. I don't want to leave the same. I don't want to leave the same. That means a little bit of instruments, yeah? I don't want to leave the same. I need you to touch me and change me. Transform my life today, oh God. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. That's so right, begin to pray. Bring your supplications, your petitions, your prayer requests. Let it be known to God. Don't hold back. If my people who were called by my name, oh God, turn it around in America. Turn it around in the White House. Turn it around in this country. You are not done with the United States, oh God. Raise up your church. Raise up your prophets. Raise up your intercessors, oh Lord. Come on, begin to pray aloud in the Holy Ghost. Come on, release your prayer language. Come on, release your prayer language. I feel the heavens bursting wide open today. Oh, yeah. With every hand lifted up in this place. Jesus. Jesus. Take a deep breath in and out. Take a breath of the Holy Ghost. Poop! Fresh fire. <laughs> There's fresh fire for the broken. There's healing for the lonely. There is love for the unlovable. Jesus. Wow, 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 wow. Jesus, Jesus. You're all I want, God. You're all I want, Jesus. Just tell Jesus how beautiful he is. Friends, let me tell you today, God is going to change your life. I know it's not an accident we are here today, Pastor Chito. Jesus, Jesus. I'm not here for blessings. Jesus, you will owe me anything. Hold. Yes, I never want to leave. Yes, sing that one more time.
Jesus, you don't own me anything for that thing that I can do. I just want you. I just want you. I just want you. Nothing else. Nothing else. Nothing else will do. I just want you. Nothing else. Nothing else. Nothing else will do. One more time. I just want you. Nothing else. Nothing else. Nothing else will do. I just want you and nothing else and nothing else nothing else will do I just I just want you nothing else nothing else nothing else will do I just want you Nothing else, and nothing else, nothing else will do. I just want you. Nothing else, nothing else, nothing else. Come on, let him hear it. I just want you. Nothing. Just the voices one more time. I just, I just want you. Nothing else. Nothing else. Nothing else will do. I just want you. Nothing else. Nothing else. Nothing else. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus. 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 Father, have we turned this into a religion? Have we turned this into a franchise? Have we turned this holy place? things of God into a business. Father, we just want you. We need you. We need you, Jesus. You are enough. You are everything. Jesus. That's right. Can we all just stand in this place here today? I can see fire being burned in our hearts. There's a ceiling tonight. There's a fresh commissioning tonight. My God. I know we're all undone in this place. And this is the type of atmosphere to bring in this woman of God, this general. Because let me tell you, what she's going to release, you must be attentive, you must be attuned. You must be one in the spirit, for this is not flesh. This is by His grace, by His mercy. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. hallelujah. <sighs> My gosh. There are miracles in this place tonight. I sense a restoration in this place, Pastor Cheeto. You know, I have not been here for over a year. And I sense there's a new springing up of the wells again. Amen. I said amen. amen. It's my great honor to be connected with this woman of God. She's a mighty general of the faith. They say behind every great man is a great woman. Well, let me tell you, 
She's not just behind Pastor Benny, but she is in the spirit somewhere praying for him all the time. <laughs> but Pastor Mama Suzanne Hinn is my spiritual mama. And her and Pastor Benny are my pastors. And it's been one of the greatest honors and privileges for me to be connected with them. Now, Mama Pastor Sue is a general of intercession, a general of deliverance. She carries some very deep. She's a third generational preacher. Her children now are fourth generational preacher. Her grandchildren in Jesus' name will be fifth generational preacher. But this woman of God is a general of the faith. Her father had one of the largest churches in America for a time. Brought in Dr. Young Gi Cho from Korea to the United States. And uh, it's my great honor and privilege on this Resurrection Sunday to introduce to you the woman of God, God's general, Pastor Mama Suzanne Hinn. Can we give it up for the woman of God? Come on. Come on, clap your hands. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on, clap your hands. Come on. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, bless the woman of God. Hallelujah. Come on, you can do better than that, amen. Come on, come on, you can do better than that, hallelujah. Are you ready to receive tonight? I said, are you ready to go to another level tonight? If you're ready, say, I'm ready for the next level. Now, friends, I want you to just stretch out your hands. And we're going to say, we bless you three times. Repeat this after me three times. We bless you, we bless you, we, we love you. We love you, we love you, we... Fire, fire, fire. Glory, glory, glory. Miracles, miracle, miracle. We receive you, we receive you, we receive you. We honor you, we honor you, we honor you. We honor. Come on, let's give it up one more time for the woman of God. Pastor Suzanne Hinn, come on, give it up. Turn. We just thank the Lord for you, Pastor Ben, that God is, is using you around the world as an ambassador and a vessel to literally connect and to be a part of just a, a chosen one that, that God, as I said, just is opening just so many portals and doors and using you to connect. Because we're in exciting, we're, it, it can be scary if we look in the natural, but greater is he that's within us, that he's, that's within the world. And it's time now for the army of the Lord to arise. It's time for us to realize that on this day in history, this day in history, this day in history, thousands of years ago, in the book of remembrance, in the courts of heaven, because the Lord loves history. He loves history. But on this day, Jesus conquered the grave. He conquered the grave. He conquered the grave. The Father sent his only begotten Son because he gave all the authority to Adam and to Eve, and they blew it. But the Heavenly Father loved us so much that he sent his Son to come to the earth to walk as us yes. on the earth yes. to pay the ultimate price yes. in this weekend yes. thousands of years ago so that we can love and we can have redemption and that we can come to know Jesus yes. Christ as Lord and Savior in our lives but the exciting thing is when he died on the cross and had Satan known what he was doing he would not have allowed it to happen because the Lord himself went into the underworld who had do you have keys in your purse does your husband have keys keys he went down into hell and he went down into the underworld and he said Satan give me back those keys 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 and he says now I give them to you 
I give them to you. 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 Because of the cross and through the blood of Jesus that was shed and his broken body that was broken. Do you realize that Moses is looking down from heaven? That Elijah is looking down from heaven right now? Paul is looking down from heaven right now. We think if we could only have been there around Elijah, if we had only could have been around the days of Moses, if we could have only been there the days of Paul, that was before the cross. That was before the cross. That was before the cross. They are looking down from heaven and they are saying, we can't wait till you get to heaven. We can't wait. Woman of God, Pastor Tess, for you to get to heaven. We cannot wait, Pastor Chito, for you to get to heaven. We can't wait, Pastor Ben, for you to get to heaven. What would have it been like? God had us there thousands of years ago, like Elijah, with the fire of God. Like Moses, with the rod of God. But God says, no, I needed Pastor Tess. I needed Pastor Tito. I needed Pastor Ben. I needed you to be born at such a time as this. For in times, for in times, for in times. You can sit down. Years ago, back in the 80s, the Lord said to me, he said, I'm going to reveal the Ark of the Covenant to you. And I said, Okay. And a lot of times, Pastor Ben and Pastor Chito and Pastor Tess, people are like, oh, I want to see an angel. Oh, I want this. I want this encounter. I want to have a face-to-face encounter with God. I can remember in the church meeting with the women, and I said, how many of I told you that there was angels behind that door? You would want to go see an angel. Oh, I would, I would, I would. I said, okay. And how many of I told you there were a bunch of demons behind that door would want to go behind the door and see that too? Not me. Not me. That's why Bible, the Bible says, seek first the kingdom of God. Seek first the kingdom of God. And everything that you need will be added to you. Will be added to you. Because what we have seen and what we know in the angelic realm, when we have that face-to-face encounter with the living God, just know that we've also seen the demonic. We've also had Satan in our face. We've also been like Reese Hell, night and day, perspiring in intercession, standing in the gap, standing in the gap, standing in the gap. And the Lord said, I'm going to reveal the Ark of the Covenant to you. And he woke me up at 3 o'clock in the morning. And I found myself, Pastor Ben, going into my family room where God would always take me in the middle of the night for intercession. And I was bent over like this. And I thought, wow, this, um, this must have been how they felt when they carried the Ark of the Covenant, when they carried the Ark of God. And just experiencing that took my breath away. It left me numb for a week. That's why I said, oh, wow, let me have an, enca- let me have an experience. Don't you dare seek an experience because you'll get one. And what you think is an angel is an angel of light, and it will be demons and demonic forces coming at you that's why you seek first the kingdom of God you seek God you seek Jesus put him back where we realize that he is high and lifted up and it's about him and nothing and no one else the father the son and the Holy Spirit so I was bent over and I thought wow this is what it must have felt like and just that encounter left me numb for a week that's all I could, could contain back in the 80s. And a week later, as I was laying in my bed, the Holy Spirit said, what you are feeling, he said, the same presence that was in that box. Are you ready for this? The same presence that was in the box of the Ark of the Covenant, that, that they literally would have to prepare themselves, Pastor Tess, for a full year 
And even the night before, when they were going in to the holies of holies, they couldn't even go to sleep that night in case they had a sensual or a sexual dream that would defile them. And that's why when they went into his presence, they had this rope tied around their ankle with bells and pomegranates because when they went in with fear and trembling into the holies of holies, if the bells stopped ringing, if the pomegranates and bells stopped ringing, it meant they were struck dead. They were struck dead because it was something in their life that was not pure and holy and consecrated and set apart. And the Lord said to me, what they carried in the box through the blood of Jesus, through the sacrifice of the cross, through the atonement of the cross, thousands of years ago on this weekend, is within you. Is within you. Is within you. Within you. Within you. Is within you, Pastor Tito. How can we not live a life consecrated to the Lord? How can we not live a life holy unto the Lord with no compromise? Who does this administration think they are on the most holy day of the year? Thinking in the face of the Lord that they can defile a day that was sacred and set apart where the Lord himself went into the underground and said, all power is given to you. All authority is given to you. All power is given to you. But when he took those keys and went into the underworld, he said, Satan, give me back those keys. I give the authority to you. 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 Lord, do something. The Lord says, I gave everything that is needed to you, to you, to you, to you, to you. My Bible says, no weapon that's being formed against me or America or my President Trump, it will not prosper. And every tongue, including your Satan, that has anything other than to say that this land was founded in the word of God. This war, this nation was founded on bended knee with prayer and fasting. That Jesus Christ was the cornerstone in this nation. And everything else will shake. When the Lord was on the cross, all creation shook. Every rock, every stone, every piece of dirt, everything in the underworld shook. We do not have to put up with principalities and powers. We do not have to put up with a spirit of Jezebel. We do not have to put up in this nation with a spirit of witchcraft. We do not have to put up with an illegitimate administration that thinks they have the right to go into my White House, to go into my nation, and to go into this nation when my president, President Trump, took out the abominable idols, when he took out the ungodly altars, when he moved out everything of witchcraft that had been an abomination for hundreds of years. And they think that they can put it back in his face. I can tell you what, I had an encounter at the age of 33, Rosh Hashanah, Rosh Hashanah, 1992. And the Lord said to me, he woke me up at 3 o'clock in the morning, and it was the audible voice of the Lord. And I tell you what, it just about took me out. And he said, I will shake everything that can be shaken. And only those with their feet on the ground, their eyes on me, and people of character and integrity. He didn't say people with gifts. He didn't say people that look nice. He didn't say people that have money. He said only those with their feet on the ground, their eyes on me, and people of character and integrity and pure motives will stand through this. He said, I'll allow you to see things. I'll allow you to hear things. I don't want you to go to Benny with it. I want you to do what I tell you to do. Say what I tell you to say. And when obedience is done, 
disobedience will be punished. He said, this is your assignment. You are the key. And he said, just your presence will unnerve principalities and powers without you opening up your mouth. Now, for a 33-year-old who just had a baby a couple months before and had a 10-year-old and an 8-year-old and a 15-month-old, that was a lot. And the Lord said to me, and I'm saying to you, he said, this is your assignment. He said, do you know the difference between an assignment and a chore? How many know the difference? How many knows when God asks you a question that it's usually that you don't know? Or you, it's always that you don't know. <laughs> so obviously when he said, do you know the difference between an assignment or a chore? I said, obviously I don't because you wouldn't be asking me if I did. And I'm telling you, he said, an assignment is something only you can do. No one else can do it for you. Each of you have been given a God-given assignment on this earth. He said, a chore is something that needs to be done. As long as somebody does it, somebody can do it. But it doesn't have to be you. When I came in a couple of nights ago, Pastor Ben had things he had to do. So he was able to say, Suzanne's coming at 1030 at night, Orange County Airport, John Wayne. Can you go pick her up? She wants almond milk. She wants sugar-free lemonade. There's certain things that she wants. Can you go to the store? He didn't have to go to the store for me. He didn't have to do all those things. He was able to release those because those were chores. Because there's things that he has been ordained by God to do, an assignment that's bigger than having to go to the store and running, going to get me yogurt or going to get me lemonade or some stevia and some hot tea because I'm British and I like a cup of tea. This is your spiritual mother. This is your spiritual father. They have an assignment that's huge. That's huge, that's huge, that I had not seen nor ear had heard those things that God has ordained for them. And when you're in this house, welcome to the fact that this is a mother and this is a father. And just like the commandments say, honor your father and mother that it may go well with you, that you may live a long life. We have to honor the spiritual mother of the house. We have to honor the spiritual father of the house. We have to honor who they are and their authority. And even with times when you think, I disagree with that, or I'm not sure, or maybe they're wrong, they're right because of their authority. Years ago, I was under the covering of Ruth Heflin, but also Gwen Shaw, and I was a handmaiden. And my dad was, was based, well, he was dying of cancer. They sent him to the emergency room. He drove himself to the emergency room. Dr. Colbert said go, and he thought, okay, I'll go to the emergency room, could probably get a blood test, and I'll just be home for Christmas. He got into the emergency room, and the doctor said, Pastor Harden, you're going nowhere. You'll be dead in 24 hours. So he called my mom. Let me tell you something. My mom, again, like I told the pastor, Derek Prince was the covering over my parents' church. My dad was his best man when Ruth and Derek got married. And before Derek went home to be with the Lord, he said nobody, it, nobody walks where he walks in intercession, spiritual warfare, and deliverance other than my mom. So my dad called my mom and said, they're not letting me out of the hospital. And they said, I'll be dead in tw 12 hours. So my mom went into prayer. And the Lord said, don't talk to me about it, Pauline. I didn't give him the cancer. Don't talk to me about it, Pauline. I didn't give him the cancer. So she thought, okay. She said, I called the devil every dirty word I could think of, which <laughs> my mom is quite comical because she was totally Mary Poppins, Julie Anders, the sweetest of the sweet you can imagine, just oozing with sweet. But she said, I said, Satan, you will not take him cancer you are only a name but the name of Jesus defeated you on the cross death you were defeated at Calvary and I take my authority and I take my weapons and she went after the enemy she went after the enemy she went after the enemy he, his kidneys were totally totally damaged and destroyed kidney dialysis we battled 
we battled, we battled. About three or four months later, I flew from California to my friend Punky, and I, she knew I'm too tired, just have a nighty on the bed. I'm not going to even open my suitcase. I'm just too tired, and I've, and I've been fighting and battling for my dad. And I literally walked into her house, and I said, I'm so angry at the enemy. He has not taken my dad out. I said, I'm going to go on a 40-day water fast. Of course, back in the day, we, grew, we did water, but anyway, all these... I, I can't even do a Daniel fast because I feel like I'm dieting. I, 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 that is just my personality. I'm just so old school. Sorry. But anyway, I said, I'm going to go on a water fast. He's not going to take my dad out. I no sooner had that out of my mouth, and the phone rang, and it was Sister Gwen Shaw, who was one of my coverings. And she said, don't even think about that 40-day water fast. Now, everything in my Pentecostal mindset wanted to say, but... I grew up fasting from the time I was 13. It was a li- it's a lifestyle. I know how to do this. But you know what? The enemy is not stupid. Because when you're in warfare and you're in a battle and you're battling for somebody's life, you need to eat your protein. You need to stay strong. Because the enemy will try to wear you down and wear you down even with fasting at times when God has not called you into a fast. So when you're weak and whatever, he can take you down and kick you to the curb. And I thought, how in the world can I not fast? But I understood authority. God is a God of authority. That's why we need the church. That's why we need the fathers. We need the mothers. We need the spiritual coverings. We've got to get back to the coverings like we had. My dad had a big church, but Derek Prince and Lydia and then Derek and Ruth were the coverings over their church. We have a prayer line that we pray every day for President Trump. And Bonnie and Mahesh Shabd are our coverings. Because you can't say, wow, I'm married to Benny Hinn. We've got a big ministry. We don't need anybody. We do. You have to be properly covered. You've got to be properly covered or you're going to not make it in the days ahead. And because I listened to the voice of authority, my spiritual mother, one of my spiritual mothers, Wynne Shaw, even though my Pentecostal mindset thought, I need to be fasting. But I said, Lord, I submit to her because she is my covering. I went to bed that night, and that was back when I took something, you took an Ambien to sleep. My friend thought, boy, that was an intense Ambien because I literally was asleep for 14 wow. hours, wow. which was my personality. If I get 14 hours of sleep of a night, that, that's good for me because I'm an intense intercessor. But while I was asleep the whole 14 hours, because I had submitted to authority, and listened to authority and submitted and honored the voice of my spiritual covering. The whole 14 hours, I was in silent intercession. The highest and deepest level of prayer is silent intercession. There's three levels of prayer. The first would be English or Filipino and tongues, Tagalog, Tagalog. Tagalog in tongues is the first level of prayer. The second level of prayer is groanings and travail where you go into the intercession. Intercession is literally where you are such a friend of God that he says you are faithful. You are clean. You are holy. You will not compromise with the word, with the world. I can drop my holy seed within you. I can drop my holy seed within you because this is a holy womb. This is a holy incubator. And it's for men too to birth. And God is looking for a man or woman that says, here I am, Lord. Here I am, Lord. Here's my womb. Here's my womb. Here's my womb. Where he drops the seed just like a man drops a seed into a woman and she births a baby. The Spirit of God drops a seed within your spiritual womb, like Azusa Street, like Amy Sample McPherson, like Reese Howell, that you incubate and you, take, you, you protect that seed. And in due time, you birth, you birth, you birth, you birth. You birth. But the deepest level of intercession is like Reese Howell. 
and I'm going to talk to you in a, in a few minutes about him a little bit more. But a life that allowed the Spirit of God to so possess him that you don't even get up, you don't go into tongues, you don't go into Filipino, you don't go into English, you don't go into groanings to veil, there's no tears. You are so dead to your life. You're so dead to yourself that the Holy Spirit from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet can possess you, can possess your body, can possess your body, can possess you, can possess you. you. The whole 14 hours, Pastor Ben, I was in silent intercession. When I got up, my friend thought, I kept checking on you. I thought, surely you must have died. She says, I've never known you to sleep for 14 hours. I said, it was the best sleep I've ever had in my life. But the whole time, my body was asleep. But intercession was going on in my body. My dad was healed. My dad was totally healed. The doctor walked in several months later. He said, Pastor Harder, I don't even believe in God. I'm an agnostic. But I'm here to tell you that you are cancer free. And he said, your kidneys were not only damaged, they were totally destroyed like somebody had taken them, the life out of them. There was nothing there. Yeah, but he said, I'm here to tell you, Pastor Harther, that you've got two brand new kidneys. Right. And you are cancer free. Wow. You are cancer free. Now, what if I had said, I'm going to go on that fast anyway. I'm not going to listen wow. to her. I'm just going to be religious with my religious spirit. I'm going to impress everybody. I'm so religious. It's a religious spirit. It's a religious spirit. It's a religious spirit. But because of my obedience, because of my surrender, because of my abandonment, because of my life laid down, when my spiritual covering said, the Lord is saying, don't even think about it. Because sometimes we think we know better than God. Sometimes we think we know more about it, and God's like, okay, you're on your own. Enjoy your little 40-day fast and let the enemy take you out and take your dad out with him, wow. with you. So we have to put our pride down and say, even though this doesn't make sense, Lord, you've given me the spiritual father. You've given me the spiritual mother, a mother in Zion, a mother in Israel. And even if she's wrong, she's right. Because how many are parents in this room? How many know when your kids come to you and want something or whatever? How many know that they're the child and you're the parent? And even, even when they think that you're wrong, you're still right. Because you're the voice of authority in your house. You're the voice of authority God is a God of authority. And the enemy understands authority, too, when we think we're going to do our own thing. We don't have to submit to anybody. We've got a big ministry. I don't have to submit to a Bonnie Master Mahesh. I don't have to have a Ruth Heflin in my life. I don't have to have a Roy and Pauline Harthorn in my life. I don't have to listen to my grandparents. who My grandfather was BFF with Smith Wigglesworth. My grandmother sang at the Royal Albert Hall for... For Amy Sample McPherson. Oh, they're just my parents. They're just my grandparents. I don't have to listen to them. If you are a child and you're under the covering of your parents, you are under their authority. And you listen to them and you submit to them if you want God to use you in the days ahead as we come into end times. Respect your elders. Respect your parents. Honor your parents. Honor your parents. What God is getting ready to do in this house, I had not seen nor ear heard those things that God has ordained for you and for you, Pastor, and for this house. Months ago, Pastor Ben, I was in Pensacola, Florida, and I heard these words. We hear, where's the God of Elijah? I heard the words, where is the God of Lester Summerall? Where is the God of Lester Summerall? And I'm speaking to you Filipinos because you know what? Wow. 
He loved the Philippines. He loved the Philippines. He laid his life down for the Philippines, which meant you had a general who walked in spiritual warfare. You had a general that was connected to my grandfather. You had a general that was connected to Smith Wigglesworth and Howard Carter and who was a covering over people like Rod Parsley. So deep within your DNA and deep within your bones is intercession, is spiritual warfare, is deliverance because the foundation was laid in the Philippines. Was laid in the Philippines. This is the type of authority you Filipinos can walk in. That God is calling you on this resurrection Sunday to rise up and realize who you have inside of you and what you have inside of you. How dare in the United States of America can an administration think that they can go into my White House that was founded in and by the word of God and they're illegitimate and we didn't vote them and God didn't ordain them into a place that they can do an abomination to the Lord. This is a time for the shaking. This is a time for the shaking. So in your very own nation, Church of the Living God, in your very own nation, Pastor, Pastor Chito and Pastor Tess and each and every one of you Filipinos and those that are listening, The authority that you have is dunamis power. The authority that you have raised Jesus from the dead. Can you imagine a man in the very nation of the Philippines when he was in bed one night on the right-hand side of the bed and he was laying sound asleep in in the bed and all of a sudden Satan shows up in the bedroom. In the Philippines. You don't think you have power? You didn't th- don't think that on this resurrection Sunday that God ordained for this day? For I, so I can tell you and speak into the atmosphere and let you know what you have inside of you? And he's asleep in the bed. And Satan shows up and starts shaking the bed. And he shakes the bed, shakes the bed. And moves the bed all the way from that side of the room. Remember Pastor Ben? All the way to that side of the room. Now, most people would be scared spitless. Let me, let me get out of the house. But not Lester Summerall. Not the person that laid help lay a foundation in your nation. No. Absolutely not. Who do you think you're messing with, Satan? We put Satan on the same level as the Lord. He is a fallen foe. He is a fallen angel. And God took the keys and gave them to you, to you, to you, to you, to you, to you. And when the bed shook to this side of the, of the room, he was in the bed and Satan left. And you know what Brother Summerall said? Satan, get back in this room. Satan, get back in this room. In the Philippines. In the Philippines. Who do you think you're messing with? My bed was over there. Bang, bang is right. In your face. My bed was over there. You get back in here. He didn't say, okay, can you please move the bed back or let me just get out of the bed. He had, you know, he just laid in the bed and enjoyed the ride. (laughs) Why are we afraid of the enemy? The Bible says he's not giving you a spirit of fear, but power, peace, and a sound mind in the name of Jesus. Now, Satan, my bed was over there. You get back in this room. I'm going to enjoy the little ride. And I do not want to sleep on this side of the bed because my bed was over there and that's how I like it. Now you get back in here and you put my bed back where you found it. That came out of the Philippines. That came out of the Philippines. That came out of the Philippines. That came out. Of the Philippines, a man that loved the Filipino people, 
a, a man that says, I'm going to a land that I do not know. I'm going to a nation that God has chosen me. Why on this resurrection Sunday am I here to let you know that deliverance is within your loins? That deliverance is within your being. That intercession is within you. When the enemy comes and messes with you, say, not on my watch, Satan. Who do you think you're messing with? Who do you think you're messing with? You want to come in my nation? You're dealing with me. Bang, bang. I grew up in, of course, I'm 65. I was born in 59. But I grew up in the decade of the 70s where you could fight and not get into trouble. And my mom, as I said, if, you, if I saw, showed you a picture of her, she looks like Mary Poppins, the sweetness of Mary Poppins. You're very British, and we just had a, a lot of fun in our house growing up. But my mom always said, don't start a fight, but finish it off. When you realize that you're being bullied by the devil, you don't play powder cake with him. I have a twin sister that's 11 minutes younger than me. And she would come up to me crying. I'm like, what's the problem? She goes, well, that guy over there is bullying me. Well, tell him, stop it. Well, I'm afraid of him. I said, why? Because he's bullying me. He's being mean. And I'd go and I'd say, I might look like her, but I'm not her. <laughs> say it to my face. <laughs> because you're messing with my twin, you're messing with me. And after school, I'd have my little skirt on and my little Pentecostal shorts on. <laughs> take the skirt off. And boy, I tell you, I won every time. God was preparing me. My twin sister worked for foster care and never got married because she took care of these kids. And she said, Suzanne, they're molesting the kids. They're doing all this stuff to the kids. They were always writing her up because she would say, You're not, this is, you are not doing this. I'm going to stand up against you. And they were always writing her up. Finally, my twin sister had enough. She said, you don't want to mess with me because my mother's an exorcist. Yes. <laughs> they don't want to mess with you because Jesus Christ paid the ultimate price on this weekend thousands of years ago so that you have the authority, 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 that you have the authority. No weapon that's being formed against you. It will not prosper. And any tongue that rises up against the perfect will of the word of the Lord for your life, he doesn't say that he's going to condemn it. He said, you will condemn it. 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 We're expecting God to do something that he's already paid the price, and he said, everything I... Everything you needed is done. Everything you needed is done. Everything you need is done. Years ago, I said, Lord, you've given me many gifts. I said, I, you've given me wisdom. You've given me discernment. I said, but I would like to kind of have the gift of interpretation of tongues and a few other things. And the Lord said very strongly to me, don't ask me for that again. Everything you need is within you already. 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 Everything you need. Healing, deliverance, intercession. Everything for this city. When you think just miles up the road, 100, 100 years ago, over 100 years ago, Azusa Street, Bonnie Bray, that one man, William Seymour, exactly, totally through his life laid down in prayer, affected this area. We went over there, and I tell you what, and I've been doing this for a long time, way before Francis Miles. I got some dirt. When I go to Bruce House, I get some dirt. When I go to where the fire fell with Smith Wigglesworth, I get some dirt. When I go to my parents' church, I get the dirt. When I go to our church, I get the dirt. I go to my parents' house, I get because if the rocks will cry out, so will the dirt. 
so will the dirt. The people in the occult literally take dirt and curse the earth and curse the dirt. But we, through the blood of Jesus, through the sacrifice of the broken body, we have the authority to speak to the earth. We have the authority to speak to the gates of our city. We have the authority to take back, to take back, to take back, to take back. How do I do it? You take the dirt and you speak life to the dirt. You take the olive oil. You take the grape juice or the wine. And seal it with salt. That's what they do in the occult, to curse the land. How much more power do we have to bless our land, to bless our city, to bless the gates of our city, to bless California? Amy Sample McPherson, the fire of God that was there in that building, where at times the fire was showing up on the, on, on the ceiling, which is going to start happening here. The ceiling of the, of the church where firemen would come in and fire trucks. Where's the fire? Where's the fire? Where's the fire? Is it here? Is it here? Is it here? Is it, here? Is it in, uh, behind this door? Is it behind this door? Let me look at all the little wires. Where's this electricity? Where's the fire coming from? And Amy would say, I'll show you where the fire is. I'll show you where the fire is. And behind her platform, which I had the privilege of preaching years ago, yeah. behind the, the stage, the platform, was a room where the intercessors 24-7 were interceding. God is going to have you, woman of God, raise up a 24-7 house of worship, house of intercession. Because we're not going to make it in the days ahead. We're not going to make it in our nation, in the nation in Israel and what's going on for end times. If we do not start interceding, the Bible says my house shall be called a house of prayer. He didn't say a house of deliverance, a house of even salvation, a house of healing. He said my house shall be called a house of prayer. Deliverance comes out of that. Salvation comes out of that. Healing comes out of that. But you know what? You are the house of prayer. You are the house of prayer. You are that house of prayer. You are that house of prayer. You are that house of prayer. I am that house of prayer. If, if what was in the Ark of the Covenant was in the box, that precious presence, that when people even came to study it, they dropped dead. But through the cross, we have what even David didn't have. Within us, within us, within us, within us. How can we watch filth? How can we watch pornography? How, we can, how can we go to movies where God's name is taken in vain? How can we listen to people's gossip and, and, and nonsense? Be ye holy, for I am holy. Be ye holy, for I am holy. For what's going on in our nation, we have got to raise up an army quickly. How many have ever heard of Reese Howe? I mean, I've not heard of Bruce Howe. Intercessor. Greatest book of prayer that I've ever read, and I'm third generational preacher's kid. I went there for three months last year as a student to the, to the school. This was a man, and I've never heard of this before, pastors, but literally the Holy Spirit said, I want to possess your body. I'm giving you six days. And with fasting and prayer, he agonized and agonized and agonized because he knew once he said yes to the Holy Spirit that if he changed his mind because it was too intense or the price was too hard or the agony that he had to have on his body and in his body to birth that thing was too intense on him and he changed his mind that the Lord would take him out. So finally, 10 minutes before 6, the Holy Spirit said, well, what's your decision? I'm agonizing. I'm wanting to say yes. The Holy Spirit says, do you want me to help you to say yes? Do you need me to help you to say yes to being possessed where your body is just a shell and I come in and totally possess you? And Reese House says yes. It was as a result of this man 
who allowed the Holy Spirit to possess him. Because this is the days we're in now with what's going on with, with Gaza and, the, and Palestine, where they're already in our nation. I, I heard reports that Shakia law has gone into some of, the, some of our cities in our nation. But God found a man. If I find a man or a woman to stand in the gap, I will save the land. I will save the land. I will save the land. And through one man's life during World War II that laid his life down in total surrender. An intercessor is not one that when God comes on you at 3 o'clock in the morning that you literally say, oh, can you wake me up at 7? When a woman's ready to give birth, she's ready to give birth now. When God needs a body to implant into birth, he, when he says it's time to birth and it's time to intercede, it's now. Oh, but I can do it in five hours. I can do it tomorrow. God says, okay, I thought I could trust you, but I'm going to have to put it in here. I'm going to have to do it through her. I'm going to have to do it through him. I'm going to have to do it through this person. Back in the early 2000s, my husband was in Hawaii in a conference, Pastor. And Jessica, well, of course, Jessica and, and Tasha were in school, but I had my two little ones, Joshua and Elisha, and they were with their nanny in the next room. And I kid you not, about quarter to six in the morning, the Holy Spirit came, and I found myself going up like Jesse to plan us. And I, I remember thinking, oh, my God, I'm not ready for this. Is it going to be five minutes? Or we, I mean, is it an all-day thing? <laughs> you know, and I mean, because a lot, you know, you hear these stories, and I mean, you think, oh, wow, that, that happened to me. But I mean, it, it's, it's, it's scary, okay? I mean, <laughs> it's not something, that's why you don't seek for it, because you'll get an experience of right, and it won't be the Lord, and you won't be ready for it. <laughs> but basically, as that, as that started to happen, I literally said to the Lord, I said, Lord, can we do this tomorrow morning? Because <laughs> I want to check on my kids, even though I knew they were with their nannies and they were fine. Can we do this tomorrow? Because it kind of, obviously, the, the, the Holy Spirit doesn't say, you know, is this convenient for you right now? You know, <laughs> what do you think? You know, when he wants to bring you visitation, it's on his time, not on ours, like intercession. And literally, I said, Lord, can we do this tomorrow, same time? And the Lord said, unless you hate father and mother and children, you're not worthy of me. He didn't say husband because I'd already given him to the world. <laughs> unless you hate father and mother and children, you're not worthy of me. And I fell on my face and I said, Holy Spirit, I'm not there yet. Would you please help me to get there? So that when you need me with an encounter, whether you need me in intercession, however you need me, whatever you want to show me, whatever you want to do, that I'm ready, that I have no fear, that I have no anxiety. Use me, Lord. Let me be that vessel. And a man laid down like Freeze Howe during World War II. Because Britain, and I came out of my parents' loins. My parents were born in Britain. My grandparents, they trailblazed the whole Welsh, the British Isles for the Lord. But literally, a man laid his life down like Freeze Howe. And when Hitler and the Germans were coming over, and I said this to your pastors, and Britain and Wales did not have the army. They didn't have the aircraft. They didn't have the ammunition. The ammunition. They didn't have, they weren't prepared. And Hitler, possessed by Satan himself, came to destroy Britain. My mom at the age of eight and nine would be underground in London for eight, nine hours at the time. The kids were underground for protection as bombs were going off. But God said, if I can find a man or woman to stand in the gap, I will save the land. And as a result of one man, God released from the throne rooms of heaven angels that came as human pilots, aircraft that came from heaven in the throne room as planes with the angels getting in. And while Germany was coming with their ammunitions and their aircraft, and England had very little aircraft and a little army coming at at Germany, God brought reinforcements. He brought reinforcements. He brought reinforcements. He brought reinforcements. In your face, in your face, in your face, in your face. Bang, bang. It's a big bang, too. <laughs> but God 
used a man to save Britain, to save England. What if God could find a woman? What if God could find a man? What if God could find a man? What if God could find a woman that says, here I am, Lord. Lord, I'll be that intercessor. I'll allow my womb for you to put your seed within me. I'll live a life laid down. I'll live a life surrendered. I will live a life of holiness. There'll be no compromise. If everybody says they're doing it, if the world says it's okay, and Christians say everybody's going to this movie and everybody's doing this and it's okay, it's okay. But, but for me, it's not. For me, it's not. Because I am consecrated. I am chosen and I'm set apart. I am set apart. God has chosen your pastor's wife. He has chosen your pastor for in time. Many are called and few are chosen. They are chosen. They are chosen. They are chosen. They are chosen. I am chosen. He chose this place. He chose this place. He chose this place. Several years ago, as I was praying, I had a vision, Pastor Ben, where I was literally in the, in the patio, and I'm speaking prophetically now to you. I was in the patio in this vision of my house where the pool is, and I was looking at the house next door where there was a patio, screened-in patio, and a pool. And all of a sudden, and this is what's happening tonight, all of a sudden, the pool in the patio, the screen, patio, the screen pool, all of a sudden separated from the house and went all the way back. And went all the way back until you couldn't see it no longer. But then all of a sudden, when it came back into view, it was no longer a pool. It was an ocean. It was an ocean. It was an ocean. It was an ocean. God, like Jabez, is enlarging your territory. God, like Jabez, is enlarging your territory. But he is raising up an army of intercessors to stand in the gap to protect you because you are the Moses of this house. Who may ascend to the hill of the most high God? Those with clean hands. And a pure heart. If God could do it with Azusa Street, if he could do it with Amy Semple McPherson, how much more can he do it? If God could do it in the very Philippines where you were all born, like Lester Summer, how much more? When I was in London a month ago, in the very place where my grandparents had a church and my mother was born, as I was in London, the Lord said, you are no longer coming with a message. You are the message. You are no longer coming, Pastor, with a message. You are the message. You are no longer coming, Pastor Tess, with a message. You are the message. You are a message, Pastor Ben. You are a message. This church is a message. When the Lord told me when he gave me the assignment of the shaking, he said, just your presence will unnerve principalities and powers without you opening up your mouth. And I said, Lord, I'm only 33. I said, do you know how it feels to walk into the church and walk into some of the, around the staff and they're lying about you and they don't like you and you haven't done anything. You're just kind of trying to <laughs> just walk in a room, that's all. And all of a sudden, every demonic power just starts manifesting. I, I said, I, I'm, I'm trying not to take it personally because I'm actually a nice person. <laughs> now I say, you know what? It takes eight seconds to make a first impression. If you guys don't like me, that's your problem. That's your loss. Because if you don't like me, I don't like you either. <laughs> because you're full of the devil, and I'm not playing patty cake with your devils and your demons. We are not known by who we hang around. We are known by who we avoid. You are not known by who you hang around. You are known by who you avoid. You are known by who you avoid. The Lord walks, walks to and fro through the whole earth to see. Who is faithful? Who is faithful? Who has been there on Sundays? Who, when they say we have a Sunday night meeting, we will show up. We can just stay all day long, and we don't really get lunch, and we just have to eat crackers or, or a bottle of water. He saw your faithfulness. 2024 is no longer the days where we say, Lord, like Malachi, open up the windows of heaven, heaven and just, you know, open up the windows. That was before the cross. Lord, open up the windows of heaven. That was before the cross. That was 
under the Levitical order. Now, because of the cross, we're under the order of Melchizedek. You're under the order of Melchizedek. How can God put a car through a window for you? How can God give you a house through a window? But through a big door and through a portal, he can give you a house. He can give you a car. He can, he can give you what you're lacking. We have limited God in our faith. Greater is he that's within you. That's within you. That's within you. That's within you. On this resurrection weekend, know that you come from a nation that the ground has already been shaken. And Lester Summerall and my parents and Derek Prince and Smith Wigglesworth and Moses and the greats of the great are looking at you and they're interceding. But more importantly, God himself, Jesus Christ, is our great intercessor ever interceding for you. For you, for you, for you. And they're saying we can't wait till God blows that trumpet, which will be soon, and calls you up. Because why did you get to st- why did you get to be chosen to be a part of end times and the end time army? We thought it was exciting back then, but we're looking at you and thinking, wow, we would wish we could have been there then. Because again, what we're what we're experiencing and what we realized that we have within us in the army of the Lord. God now is saying, you are, an, you are lieutenants. You are generals, but you are lieutenants in my army. He has given you a new garment today on this resurrection. He's given you a new garment, a new robe. He's given you a new attire. A couple of years ago, Pastor Ben, I had a vision, and I was in my parents' church, and I was sitting on the back row with my mom, and again, what, what a blessing. She had some dementia at the last part of her life. And there was one time that there was a lot going on, and I thought, I'm not going to bring my mom to California because there's just too much warfare. And the Lord said, you are bringing your mother to California because your mother's presence in the house is silent intercession. Don't underestimate the saints that are still on earth, even though they might have dementia or Alzheimer's or whatever. Their life is silent intercession. And the Lord said, you will, you will bring her. You will bring her. You will bring her. You will bring her in this house. You will bring her. She was literally in California. She was here for many, many years while we lived here. So her presence is still known here. And, and I actually, Pastor Ben, have authority here too. Because I and my husband lived in California. So we have an authority too in this state. God has not forgotten you. He has not forgotten California. He has not forgotten, and he has not forgotten in the book of his remembrance, Amy Samuel McPherson and Azusa Street and whatever. And again, I've got some dirt in my little bag. We grew up poor, so I don't mind getting my hands dirty. Just not around Benny, that's all. (laughs) He's a neat neck. There's wealth in this, these grounds. There is wealth all around you. There is wealth. Know, again, that the power of the resurrection is blowing afresh on you. The Jeffrey brothers in England, my, my grandmother was number one in opera, number one in theater and the whole British Isles. And she was coming from London home from, from practice. And she heard these beautiful voices and she thought, I've got to get them out of these, these I've got to get them out of this tent and I've got to get them into, into opera. And it was the Jeffrey brothers, two brothers that they would walk into a place and say, the master is here. And people that were blind received healing. But they did not receive healing because they were blind. They received healing because they had no eyes and eyeballs popped in. A man was born with no tongue. No tongue. He had the stump of the tongue in the back of his throat. The master is here and a tongue grew out. I can remember my dad saying how my grandparents who had a church invited this man to come and testify in church. And they had him, had him at their house for tea time. 
And my dad said, I couldn't wait to get my grandparents, get my parents out of the room so I could say to the man, stick out your tongue. He said, I knew I'd get into trouble because that was naughty back then. Stick out your tongue. Where he could see literally where there was a stump of a, a tongue and the tongue had grown out. We are coming into those days where people are literally going to be going to the hospital and not knowing why they're pulling into the parking lot, not knowing why they're pulling into the parking lot of your churches and different things. I has not seen. The best is yet to come. In Jesus' name, God bless you. Come on, give the Lord Almighty a clarity. Huh? Worship team, please. Thank you. Do board up. Listen, in a few minutes, we're going to pray. And a woman of God's going to lay her hands on you. Did you catch what you said today? Three levels of intercession. The first level of intercession is English, Spanish, Tagalog, Korean, your heavenly language. The second level is groans and moans. The groanings that words cannot express. And then the third is silent intercession. I believe today the Lord is releasing a baptism of prayer and intercession in this place. And I believe the Filipino church, you win the church Los Angeles. There's an army of intercessors that God's raising up in Los Angeles for the nation of the earth. If you believe that, say amen. If you receive this today, say amen. Now, people of God, I want you to stand in this place. I hope you realize the magnitude of what was released tonight. Whenever God brings a general, a man, woman of God into a house or a region, it means that they're about to go to the next level. It's called a divine appointment. Are y'all asleep today? I said it's called a divine appointment. It's called a Kairos moment in the spirit. Now, I believe it's not an accident, Pastor Cheeto. God allowed the woman of God to come here to you, to this church. You see, you have to hear this, friends. Because Pastor Suzanne said, Dr. Ben, I'm coming in on Sunday. And that was, this was like one week ago. And I said, my gosh, you're coming in one week. And I prayed and I prayed and I knew we needed to spread the wealth. We need to spread the glory. Because Pastor Suzanne's blessed my church many times. And it's such a blessing to always have and host her. But I said, Lord, this impartation of prayer, intercession needs to be spread across the world. Amen. Someone say amen. amen. And I prayed and I felt like, you know what? Let's believe for a Sunday night service. And I actually asked three other churches, Pastor Cheeto. And these men of God, one of them is my covenant brothers, but these men of God, they're very affluential, influential ministers, and they're good friends of mine. And this was one week ago, and they said, sorry, you know, uh, we would love to have the woman of God another time, but Easter Sunday, Resurrection Sunday, we're too busy. It's only one week away, sorry. And then I'm like, oh, God, I know Pastor Suzanne's coming. I want to set something up for her. I want to host her well. I want to receive the woman of God. Get some fire and seed in the ground. And I was talking with Pastor Cheeto. And I felt led to message him and ask him, man of God, do you want to have this general here? He said, yes. All you need is a simple yes. And watch what God will do after that. Amen. All you need is say yes. And when you say yes to the Lord, he will begin to pour out the heavens over your life. God's going to bless you tonight mightily. And I love what the woman of God said. It's true. I was in the Philippines two months ago. Panginoon. Salamat po. 
Send me back to Palawan so I can get sunburned like a tomato. <laughs> These men of God, they're talking all about Lester Summerall in the Philippines. Now that impartation is here today. Pastor Suzanne's grandfather, father or grandfather, father, grandfather, was best friends with Lester Summerall. Are you ready to receive today? I said, are you ready to receive today? Well, let's just worship the Lord with every hand raised. Come on. There it is. You guys got a song in your heart? Yeah, go ahead. Lead us, team. Yeah, lead us, team. Yeah. No place I'll run. We don't, we don't hear a mic. No place I would rather be. No place I would rather be. No place I would rather be. And here in your love, here in your love, no place. No place I would rather be. No place I would rather be. No place I would rather be. And here in your love, here in your love. No place I'd rather be. No place. No place I'd rather be. There's no place. No place I'd rather be. And here in your love, set a fire. Set a fire down in my soul. soul. That I can't contain. Whoa. That I can't control. I, I want, want more of you, God. I, I want, want more of you. Kind 
says when it begins to rain ask him for more ask him for the outpouring when it begins to rain ask him for the outpourings of God 
Who's ready for an outpouring of the Holy Ghost? Who's ready for a fresh outpouring of the power of God? If that's you, say, I'm ready. Come on, say, I'm ready. Give the Lord a mighty clap. Hallelujah. Now, in a few minutes, we're going to pray with you. And let me tell you, some of you, my gosh, if you receive this prayer impartation, it could be so dangerous, so dangerous, because this is a weapon. It's not just for fun things. Oh, I got touched from the woman. I got, oh, I got touched from No, this is a weapon of mass destruction. But some of you, you're going to get caught up in the heavenlies and the glory. Shakaraba. Because those who truly want an impartation, you'll be shaken from the inside out. Who wants the fire of God today? I said, who wants the fire of God today? Come on, this is a general. This is a mother, a woman of God. Of one of the most influential ministries, ministers, evangelists, families, and all of human history. And she's here in this house. Come on, give the Lord some praise for that. Hallelujah. Now with every soul standing and every eye closed, raise your hands to the Lord. We're going to bless the woman of God. We're going to honor the Lord, God's servant, God's handmaiden. Shanama. Now tonight, on this Resurrection Sunday, you know, we're about to shift into April. Who's believing for April showers? April signs and wonders. Amen. April Passover miracles. If that's you, say amen. I believe tonight there is a launching and an impartation. But with every hand raised, I close. Tonight we're going to bless and honor the woman of God. I want to invite you to honor the grace, the anointing that's here tonight. Once again, God has trusted this house. God has trusted Pastor Chito and Tess. God has trusted Win Los Angeles. Amen. I said amen. For greater works, for greater things. Now tonight we're going to bless the woman of God. I want you to ask the Lord, hear me now, ask God on this Resurrection Sunday, what is an honorable thing to do? Is it honorable to bless a spiritual mother, father with a crumpled hamburger $5 bill? Or is it honorable to give your spiritual father, mother your best? Someone say best. Huh? Say best. Now, once again, you have to discern who's here today. You have to discern by the Spirit. Now, some of you, I believe God is saying double that right now. Someone say double. I said say double. Some of you, God is stretching your faith to even go double. Huh? The Bible says, according to your faith, it shall be done to you. Who wants double glory? I don't hear you in the back. I said, who wants double glory? Well, then that means sometimes you must have double honor. Give double honor. I believe God is stretching some of you to sow double. I believe there's people here in this house tonight. You are true intercessors called by God. And this impartation from this general today, it will mark you and change your life forever. Can I get an amen? amen? Now with every hand raised, every eye closed, Father, speak to your children today. Speak to them loud and clear. We don't have to, but we get to. We don't have to sow. We don't have to bless. But we get to. Because this is how we reap. And this is a principle of honor in the kingdom of God. Amen. Now, friends, if you're going to write out checks, you can write out to Benlin Ministries. We do have a giving code on the screen, a QR. If you want to give by Venmo, PayPal, Tithely, Cash App, the QR code is up on the screen. 
Uh, if you need to give by credit card, we do have envelopes here. Please write it cleanly, neatly. Please write your telephone number. Even if you give by cash, I want you to give neatly and give your best ushers. Please raise the envelopes in the air. We must have more than one more usher here. Too. Yeah, we have Zell too. Where's the ushers? Come on. If you need an envelope, raise your hand, please. Come on. We need one, more than one more usher. Come on, guys, please. Come on, guys. We need more than one more usher, please. Come on. Yeah, lift, lift up the envelopes. Thank you, brother. Thank you, Kuya. Kuya Turtle. <laughs> yeah, please lift up, your, lift up your hand if you need an envelope. Come on. So quickly, so quickly. Do not delay. Do not doubt. Rebe Sotorabo. Be generous. Bless the woman of God today. Were you blessed tonight? Huh? Are you glad the Lord brought Pastor Suzanne in to this house tonight? What else would you be doing? Eating some lechon at home? Huh? This is better than lechon. This is a feast, a banquet that has been prepared by the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. If you're going to write out checks, write to Ben Lim Ministries. If you want to give by credit card, you can write down your credit card information cleanly, neatly. Please also put down your telephone number because we don't want to track you like the IRS agents. Give your best, your cash. We do take house deeds and car deeds. If you got uh, any wedding engagement rings you want to get rid of, we take those. We do not take your husband's though, okay? We don't want any of them. <laughs> bang, bang. Yes, that means okay in Korean. Yes, you're welcome, Donato. Now, in a few minutes, we're going to line you up. And if you want prayer, the woman of God is going to pray with you. Who wants Pastor Suzanne to come back here? No. I, I said, who wants Pastor Suzanne Hinn to come back here? Are you sure? Are you sure? Friends, we do have a merchandise table outside. Pastor. I do have some CDs and books. Listen, I know I've been here before, but this is a new addition. You're going to love this. I have two different types of anointing oils. First one is called the bridegroom oil. This is three types of essential oils put together. It enhances your prayer life and your love in the bridegroom chambers of the Lord. This one is called the oil of grace. Now, we're going to use this one to pray tonight. But this one releases miracles over your life. It's a five blend oil of biblical essential oils. Somebody say, wow. Now, this is a small bottle, $15 to purchase. But every purchase helps the work of our ministry, Benlin Ministries. You know, we are a global soul winning ministry. Are you grateful that we're able to win souls for Jesus? Isn't this called Win Church LA? You're filled with winners, not losers. Amen? Amen. So uh, this bottle of oil, this will change your life. D these sell out like hotcakes. Do you have one of our bottles of oil, man? Well, here, the bridegroom oil, and we're going to give you one of the oil of grace. But I want to bless somebody with a free bottle of oil tonight. Nobody hears me. Is my mic up? I want to bless somebody with a free bottle of oil. This is a $15 gift. Yeah, Pastor Tess, just smell it. I want you to smell it, okay? Yeah, we're, just smell that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you like that. Yeah, look at that. We're going to use this to pray over you tonight. But uh, I want to bless somebody with a free bottle of oil. Does anybody want a free bottle of oil tonight? Nobody wants a free gift today. Nobody wants to forgive today. Guys, this will bless you. This will change your life. Does anybody want a free bottle of oil today? God bless you. Yeah. Uh, we also do have two books here. We have CDs and two books. Men of Valor, The New Breed. Does anybody like to read? Anybody like to read? 
Remember, leaders are readers. Nobody likes to read. Nobody likes to read. Which one do you like? I have men of valor and new breed. You get one and you get one from there. Okay, God bless. And you get the men of valor. Amen. Give it up for this man of God. Listen, we have t-shirts, Bam Fam, which stands for the Bam Bam, the Bang Bang of our ministry. And we got, look at it, Hawaii inspired greater glory for the greatest tsunami wave ever. Amen. Now, who wants a t-shirt tonight? Who wants a t-shirt? Come, mama, bunny, bunny. We, bunny, Tom. We also have the Fuego, Fuego, Fuego design. This is one of our best sellers. Look at that. Somebody say Fuego. We got Fuego, Fuego, Fuego. What does that mean? Fire. So who wants a t-shirt tonight? Nobody wants a t-shirt? If you want a t-shirt, go and buy it at the table, okay? We also have worship flags. Anybody like to worship? Wait, you can't go to one, huh? We got worship flags. Did, did you already give? Can we all stand? Did you already give? All right, if you still have your seat in the air, just lift it up. Yeah, see, look at these worship flags. These are all prophetically handmade. Look at that. Yeah, look at that. Yusuf, show us how to flag. Come on, go, Yusuf. Yeah, look at that. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah. So these are all prophetically handmade. They all have a different prophetic name and even a price. But I believe in the prophetic. I believe in the worship. So go ahead and see us at the book table. Lift up your hands. Father, I thank you for your precious presence that's here today. Bless all of these people that are sowing, that are giving, honoring the grace, the mantle that's here today. Father, we declare a hundredfold return. That even as we transition to the month of April, there will be April showers in your life. If you believe that, say amen. All right, give the Lord a big God bless you. Amen. All right. If you still have to give, we still got this Easter basket, please. Make sure you put your Easter bunny eggs there. Hallelujah. Pastor Chito, Pastor Test, do you want to say anything before I invite the woman of God back and we pray for the people? And he's speechless. Are you blessed? Amen. Amen. Now listen, people of God. If you want to receive prayer, if you want to receive an impartation, hands laid on, anointed with oil, I want you to come forward right now. Come forward right now, please, Pastor. Pastor. <laughs> come forward right now. Amen. Now, we do need some catchers. I don't